Just an update, we had an officer involved shooting this morning at about uh, 1.40 in the morning. Grand Rapids police officers were called for uh, an individual who was rifling through uh, neighborhood cars in the area around Forrester and Bonita, just south of 28th Street. Um, the officers responded, they saw a man uh, in the area next to where one of the neighbors had said uh, uh, their car had been broken into. Uh, the officer told the man to stop. He ran, they chased him for a very short period, at which point in time he uh, pointed a gun at one of the officers. Both officers uh, fired at the man and uh, he was placed into custody. He's taken to the hospital, he's in serious condition, he is expected to survive, but happy to answer any questions. Uh, you recovered the gun? Yes, yeah, the gun was recovered on scene. We actually didn't recover the gun, Michigan State Police, we uh, secured the scene for evidence and uh, you know, our process here when there is an officer involved shootings to have the Michigan State Police do the investigation. So Grand Rapids Police Department obviously responded as well. Uh, Kent Wood came from Mutual Aid, uh, Wyoming Police Department came, the uh, Kent County Sheriff's Department came and uh, set up a perimeter for just to secure the scene, waited for Michigan State Police who were there very quickly with uh, their detectives and forensics team. They did all, all the evidence collection and uh, I did respond to the scene myself and uh, I did see uh, that the, there was a gun on scene, yes. Were any shots fired by the individual? That's uh, uh, not information that, that I'm aware of at, at this time. It will be part of the Michigan State Police information. I do know that our officers did fire numerous gun, numerous rounds. Do you have the age of the suspect? Um, I, uh, he's an adult, is, is all I know, yeah. Do you know what type of gun was recovered from the scene that the suspect had? Is it a real yeah. gun? Is it a, you know? It looked to me, uh, from my experience, and again, I didn't recover it, Michigan State Police recovered it. I haven't talked to them uh, about it, but from my experience, it looked to me like a uh, Taurus semi-automatic handgun, a, a real handgun. It's, it's possible that it's something otherwise, but uh, I would uh, strongly suspect that it, it was a real gun. Is it believed that just one suspect was involved initially? That's, that's correct, and uh, again, the, the uh, investigation is preliminary, but we did get uh, cooperation from the neighbors who called the police and, and gave us this information about this man breaking into their cars, and they just indicated there was one offender doing that. Approximately what time did MSP wrap up their on-site um, investigation? You know what, uh, they actually might still be down there. I'm not sure that it's com completely wrapped up, but uh, I was down there probably till about 3.30 or 4, and they were still doing their work down there, so uh, at least till then. It was multiple cars that were broken into? That's correct, yes. Should you see the video? connected to uh, Kia Boys? No, that's a, uh, something that I thought about actually when I was headed down there and you know generally how the Kia boys operate, they, uh, they go as a, as a gang. You know, it's a gang and they go three or four, they, they travel in, in groups. Uh, this was just one individual. Did you have you seen video of the incident? I have, yes. I've seen body, I've seen the, uh, there may be other video out there, so I'm going to put that disclaimer out there, but I've seen both officers uh, body worn camera video and I've seen the in-car camera video. And I will say too that I have a, a team upstairs working as quickly as possible to uh, redact what's needed to be re redacted because we think it's important in the spirit of transparency to get that information out, out to you so that you can get it to the public as soon as possible. Can you yeah. describe what you saw in that video for us? Sure. Yeah, as I said, the officers uh, can be seen on the video responding to uh, this call for service of an individual that's uh, going through uh, people's cars in the neighborhood. Um, they're directed to a specific address where he was last seen sit seated, uh, seated in a vehicle. Um, the officers approach that address and uh, they see an individual. Um, both officers e exit the car. Um, they uh, make an announcement to you know, stop police. They turn their lights on, their uh, emergency lights, so they're clearly visible as a police car. And uh, they start walking on foot. The man runs, so they run. Uh, as they uh, approach him, the man turns uh, with a gun towards his hand and points it directly at one of the officers. Your initial perspective is that officers did things correctly? So, um, uh, it's not my investigation, and I don't know what I don't know. And like you guys have seen before, I only have what the Grand Rapids Police Department has. I have three videos. I have both officers' body-worn camera videos. I have the in-car camera videos. I know that there's a canvas done for other video in the area. From uh, my perspective, what I can say is that uh, the video indicates that there was a, a, what appeared to me, to be a firearm pointed directly at one of my police officers. Do you know how many times and where on the person the male was shot? I don't. The information that I got preliminary was that he was shot, shot multiple times, that he was in very serious condition. However, he is ex expected to survive, but I don't have the, the uh, uh, details of where I'm he was shot. You, you're five months out of yoga. Uh, what kind of steps in the community are you and Davis or Washington doing 
go out and explain what happened to the community to, to try to be transparent yeah, and early, work with them. Yeah, and good question. And uh, this is the, the start. You know, this happened at 140 this morning and uh, gather as much information as we can as soon as possible. You know, uh, uh, Brandon Davis was the first person I called this morning. I, I woke him up, uh, woke the city manager up shortly thereafter. Uh, Brandon had down to the scene with us and um, just getting as much information as we can, as quickly as, as we can, talking to you guys. And then again, I got a team upstairs as we speak right now going through the videos to at least to be able to provide what the Grand Rapids Police Department has in the way of transparency and without uh, obviously interfering with the Michigan State Police investigation. Was this a two-man car or were there two patrol officers? That's correct. Separate? That's correct. Two, together? Yeah, two officers were riding in the car together. You know how yeah. far away they were when the from the suspect when he when the shots were fired. I would be guessing, but uh, but uh, happy to guess, are probably about uh, 40 feet or so. Yeah. Was it dark? Was it yeah, it uh, it was dark. There's some street lights there, and also uh, you know headlights from the officers, but also the officers uh, both had flashlights as well. Any of the uh, bullets stray hitting any homes or any other vehicles? That's something that uh, that we would do a canvas for. You know, the the uh, neighbor, the entire neighborhood will be canvassed. Any any door uh, will be knocked on that's in the area. However, uh, where that shooting actually took place in that intersection there around Forrester and Bonita is a very large park, and it looked like the direction of the bullets would have uh, gone into the park. So, uh, something that that we're always concerned about, though, because bullets can travel a very long way and still be deadly. After an officer's charged with murder, do you feel that members of the public are more, more emboldened to do this type of behavior that you say is happening, like pointing a gun at police, and is that a concern that you have moving forward? I am concerned about, uh, I, I don't know if I'd necessarily conflate those two, but uh, anytime that there's sort of, a sort of uh, picture of a delegitimacy of law and order or the police department in general, it's a serious concern of mine. I've seen it happen in other jurisdictions. I don't know that that's what we're seeing in Grand Rapids. In fact, we've seen uh, just the month of August, we've seen a significant decrease in violent crime. I expect that that decrease will continue. I hope it is. I'm optimistic it, it will. So uh, I can't explain this individual's behavior. I think as we learn more about the investigation, hopefully we'll get some more answers on that. Have you have seen an uptick in car break-ins. Anything we can say to people outside of making sure to lock your doors about what's being done? Of I mean, lock your door, park in a, if you can park in a well-lit area, obviously. Um, not everybody has the opportunity to park inside if you can, but then it's uh, be a good neighbor. You know, um, this, uh, this incident tonight, there were just a lot of neighbors that uh, said they don't want to put up with this and uh, they're going to call. A lot of individuals, too, um, uh, have been putting up uh, doorbell cameras. That's very helpful for us. Not only is it helpful for us to solve these crimes, but it's a very helpful deterrent. So if you have surveillance on your home that uh, is visible and people know, a lot of times they're going to go to the, the, the house or they're going to go to the street next door. You know, they're actually, I'm, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. Did, did you actually get doorbell camera video from here? For, uh, for this incident, we, uh, although we're happy to ha help uh, in any way canvas, the Grand Rapids Police Department is, is not doing the secondary um, surveillance video sort of searches. We just have the video that we have and uh, any other help that the state police needs, we're happy to give it to them, but I expect that they will be uh, collecting that video if such video exists. Have you spoken to the two officers? How are they feeling? Are they shaken up? I am. They're very, very shaken up, um, as uh, I would be too, I'm sure, but uh, I did check in with them today and I told them uh, before they left here, and I told them I'd give them a call tonight when, once they've been able to get a little rest. Do you know how long they've been with the department? They, I don't know specifically how long. Um, I know that, uh, for example, neither one of them has been involved in an officer-involved shooting before. Um, yeah. Chief, you to this uh, two-man car policy back in April. Uh, was that, were they riding together because of that policy, and do you think that may have Added to officer safety last night. It certainly did add, add to officer safety because it very well could have been a, a one-man unit that, that uh, traditionally would have gone. We don't have any more a hard and fast uh, two-person car. Part of that is logistically. You know, I, I've uh, spoken to you and others here uh, about uh, the officer shortage, not only in the Grand Rapids Police Department but across West Michigan and really across the country. And logistically speaking, when there's somebody that's calling for a police report for a stolen car or a, a you know a burglary report, to be able to send a single man unit to those cases, it just makes more sense, uh, better coverage for the city. Officer safety wise, we would always love to have two off officers in the car. So uh, fortunate that there were two officers working together because it could have ended uh, much differently.